In the world we see and touch, the rules are simple. An object is either here or it is there. A ball thrown at a wall will always bounce back. These are the certainties of our macroscopic reality, the world built of trillions upon trillions of atoms. But for the last century, we have known that beneath this solid reality lies another universe, governed by a set of rules so bizarre they defy all intuition. This is the quantum world. In this microscopic realm, a single particle is not a tiny ball, but a wave of probability. And this wave can do the impossible. It can exist in a place where, classically, it has no energy to be. It can leak through a solid barrier, disappearing from one side and reappearing on the other without ever breaking it. This is quantum tunneling. For nearly a century, we believed this ghostly magic was confined to the world of single particles. It was a rule for the very small, but not for the world we live in. The story of tunneling is woven into the history of modern physics. It was first used to explain the mystery of radioactive decay, how a piece of an atomic nucleus could escape the immense forces holding it together. It's the reason the sun can burn, allowing protons to tunnel through their mutual repulsion to fuse and create light. The 1973 Nobel Prize was awarded in part for observing electrons tunneling in semiconductors and superconductors, the workhorses of modern electronics. At the heart of superconductivity is a strange and beautiful phenomenon. In extreme cold, electrons, which normally repel each other, pair up into what are called Cooper pairs. These pairs behave not like individual particles, but as a single unified entity, a vast synchronized dance that flows through a material without any resistance. They're described by a single shared wave function. They act as one. This led the great physicist Anthony Leggett to ask a profound question. If billions of Cooper pairs can act like a single quantum object, could the entire system tunnel at once? Could you build a circuit, something big enough to hold in your hand, that would behave like a single giant particle and pass through a wall? This concept was dubbed macroscopic quantum tunneling, or MQT. It was a modern-day version of Schrodinger's famous cat paradox, testing the absurd limits of quantum mechanics on a scale we could actually see and measure. This was the challenge taken up in the mid-1980s at the University of California, Berkeley. There, Professor John Clark, his postdoctoral researcher, Michel Devoray, and his doctoral student, John Martinez, set out to build an experiment to witness this impossible feat. Their device was a tiny superconducting circuit on a chip, featuring a component called a Josephson junction, two superconductors separated by a razor-thin insulating barrier. With immense care, they cooled their circuit to just fractions of a degree above absolute zero, shielding it from any stray noise or radiation. They then applied a small current, trapping the system of Cooper pairs in a zero-voltage state. Classically, the system was stuck. It did not have enough energy to overcome the barrier and create a voltage. It was like a ball sitting at the bottom of a valley with no energy to roll up and over the hill. And then they watched. Time and time again, after a brief, unpredictable pause, a voltage would suddenly appear. The system had escaped. Despite having no energy to climb the hill, it had tunneled right through it. Not one electron at a time, but the entire macroscopic system of billions of Cooper pairs acting in perfect unison. They had unequivocally witnessed macroscopic quantum tunneling. But they didn't stop there. By zapping the circuit with microwaves, they made another profound discovery. The system would only absorb energy in specific, discrete amounts, or quanta. It had distinct energy levels, just like a single atom. The implications of this were staggering. Clark, Devore, and Martinez hadn't just observed a strange effect. They had created an artificial atom, an atom with wires and sockets, one that could be controlled, measured, and engineered. They had taken the bizarre rules of the quantum world and built them into a tangible, human-made device. This discovery is the bedrock upon which much of modern quantum technology is built. Their artificial atom is the direct ancestor of the quantum bit, or qubit, the fundamental building block of a quantum computer.
John Martinez himself would later go on to lead a team that built one of the world's first quantum computers to achieve quantum supremacy. From quantum simulation to ultra-sensitive detectors, the work of these three laureates transformed quantum mechanics from something we observe in nature to something we can build, control, and engineer. They showed that the strange and wonderful rules of the quantum world were not confined to the shadows, but could be brought into our own macroscopic reality, opening a door to a future of technology we are only just beginning to explore.